Put together a quick video overview to share with you one of our favorite software products, and this is called Separation Studio. Now for screen printers, this is an important tool to allow you to take a full color digital image and color separate it to reproduce on your screen print press. So I'm gonna give you a little background information. I'm gonna give you a mini tour of Separation Studio and share some exciting details with you. So to begin, let's talk about this process of simulated process screen printing. Again, it's the, the ability to take a full color image and then being able to reproduce that on press. So here I have a photograph. This is actually a photograph of a screen printed garment. And this was produced using Separation Studio. So you can see as I zoom way in here, you know, thousands of times, you can see how you know, this is a, what appears to be a photographic quality or a, you know, a, a digital image, but you can see how it's been screen printed on a garment. I'm gonna go ahead and close that image. And let's, you know, here's a, a zoomed in variation of that. So if I zoom in even further, you can see how colors are blending to produce all of the detail, the shadow, the tones in this particular graphic. Here's another example. Look at the flesh tones in this. This is pretty amazing. So as I zoom in here, again, you can see how you know gold and red, these spot colors are mixing to produce these effects, you know, these flesh tone effects. And you can see how, how crisp and how vibrant and the quality of that. Now, this really is going to help you elevate your game into a whole new level of screen printing. That's really why we think Separation Studio is so valuable. You know, oftentimes screen printers find their comfort base doing the vector based, you know, spot color, pretty simple, straightforward jobs. However, as soon as you adopt this technology and you learn this workflow and this printing technique, you can produce really high end, full color digital graphics and reproduce those again on your press. So in the, the rest of this presentation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the process of separating this particular graphic uh, for printing on a dark garment. And that's really how this software is specialized. It allows you to generate a white base and a highlight white. So I'm going to kind of take you through the standard workflow in Separation Studio. So let's go ahead and launch Separation Studio at this point. Now this is a product that's compatible with both Macintosh and PC. So regardless of what operating system you're working in, you can use this product. And it doesn't matter what graphic design application you're using, whether it be Photoshop or you know, Adobe Illustrator, Corel uh, Photo Paint or Corel Draw, this is a product that uh, anybody can use. Now this is, again, a very specialized product. So let's assume that you have a graphic, a digital image, and you've color corrected it. You know, you've made sure that it's a high quality image. You know, that's important. You know, garbage in is garbage out, and that applies to any process, any software. Uh, that's the golden rule. So let's assume that we have a good quality, high resolution, properly prepared file. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use Separation Studio to do the rest of the work. This is the easy part in the process. So here's the, uh, the dashboard and the workspace for Separation Studio. As you can see, it's really simple. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and click on the import or open function in the top left. I'm going to go and browse and pull open a, um, a uh, file here, which is going to be a good reference point. And again, we're going to walk you through the process of separating this for a uh, print on a dark garment. And of course, we could use the same tool to prepare a file for printing on a light or really any color garment. So as you can see, as a result of simply importing this file, it's already color separated. Automatically, Separation Studio is going to color separate this, and it's going to break it down to nine color channels. And those are represented here at the very bottom. So I'm going to walk you through them. We're going to start with the bottom first. Here we can see a proof positive. This is one of my favorite tools in this software. The proof positive allows me to see all of the changes that I might make to this particular graphic, meaning if I adjust the saturation, if I want more intense green, I'm going to see those changes in effects on screen. So I like to think of it as sort of a virtual, you know, screen walk. You know, I can see exactly, or, or press walk, walk rather, I can see exactly what this is going to look like on press. I don't have to actually output films, burn screens, and get on press just to see what it's going to look like. So, you know, screen printers are always obsessed with time savings and efficiencies. And Separation Studio is going to help you not only produce better quality separations and better quality prints, but it's going to save you time uh, in that process. So the proof positive, again, is going to let you see all of those changes. We'll come back to that in a moment. Now you can see here, here's our base white. So if I select the base white, I'm going to see just that channel. If I select red, I'm going to see just that channel. So you can see that um, this allows you to really target and focus in on those specific uh, you know, channels. So here's the workflow in Separation Studio. The first decision I'm going to make is, you know, I'm going to enhance some of the colors. So if I've done the color correction properly, I might not even need to go through these steps in Separation Studio. However, those tools are available. So I don't have to go back to Photoshop or Corel Photo Paint 
to make an adjustment, make the red pop off. I can use some of the tools that are already in the software, meaning I can click on the red channel here from the right hand side and I have the ability to adjust uh, the saturation. So you can see here, if I want to make the red more intense, you can see as a result of using this slider, I can increase the saturation of the red. Now, I also have the tools to increase the saturation in specific areas. So using these sliders will control the intensity of the color globally throughout the entire design. However, it may be important to just go into a specific area of the graphic to increase its saturation. So two methods for adjusting saturation. I've just showed you the first one. I'll go ahead and select OK. The other option is I can select just that particular channel. So here I'm working in the red channel alone, and we have some saturation tools here. We have several saturation tools. We can either go and use the lasso, the polygon lasso, and the select tool to really target a specific area. So, or I could use the sort of the saturation tool, which is going to allow me to, you know, almost treat this as a brush and target a very specific area. So I'm going to go ratchet this up. Let's make this a hundred pixel brush. So it's going to be a lot larger. So you can see that nib size now. And then I have the ability to zoom in to a particular area. I'm going to go and size this window, make it a little bit larger so you can see what this will look like. And what I, again, what I do is I have the ability to now go and effectively pinpoint a specific area. So let's say I want to increase the saturation in this area. I have the ability to do that and I can control the range. Where am I going to saturate? The midtones, the highlights. So again, I can use this tool to really ratchet up the saturation in that particular area. So you can see as I hover my mouse in this area, it's going to bring out a lot of that data and again, saturate the colors in that particular region. So you can see here on screen how I'm adjusting that saturation. Now this is why that proof positive is so valuable. So you can see that change reflected now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this in a new window. So I'm going to keep the proof positive here on the right hand side, I might choose to adjust, or excuse me, the left hand side, I might choose to adjust that red channel here on the right hand side and I'm going to see that effect update and uh, again this is just a really great guide for you to make those changes. Now, Of course I can hit control Z to go back in time, control Z being the oops button and um, again I can adjust all of my channels so the first sort of process is to adjust the color, make sure the color is popping, make sure you're satisfied with the saturation levels Really one of the next steps is to choose what colors are unnecessary. So um, as I mentioned, automatically you're going to get nine color separations, nine channels. However, you'll notice that some channels have little to no data in them. So you can see there's barely any blue in this particular uh, file. And one of my favorite functions is I have the ability to deselect the blue channel. And I can see whatever impact that might have on my design using this this uh, technology here, this view right technology that's going to let me see the color changes and how those will impact the design. So what I may choose to do, and, and you'll notice this to, to make my point here, if I deselect the red channel, how is that going to impact my design? Well, you can see it dramatically. And of course, green is a fundamental part of this design. If I deselect the design, how is that going to impact my file? You can see it's pretty dramatic. So again, if I deselect blue, well, there's you know, hardly any data in blue. So what I can do is right mouse click on that blue channel and I can say delete channel. It's unnecessary, get rid of it. So you can see I just reduced this now to eight channels. So I'm gonna continue that process. You know, There's no data in the purple channel. So I can right mouse click and I can delete that channel. Now you can see there's a bit more information in this turquoise channel. So I can make the decision, do I wanna retain this information? Is it mission critical? And I can do that by going back to the view right and the proof positive, and I can deselect that turquoise channel. You can see it really makes a, a little bit of, uh, of impact in sort of the, the shading of this particular file. So look in, in this particular area where the, the, the mouse is now hovering. You can see in this cheek area of this design. So if I deselect turquoise, you're going to see a very, very subtle impact, the lighting, sort of the shading, the shadows. You're going to see how that makes a you know makes a little bit of an impact so you can make the decision as a printer you know what quality level are we going for does this have to be topmost quality you know how how significant is that turquoise channel i can leave it one of the other decisions i have is i have the ability to go to the channels drop down menu and i can merge the turquoise so what we're going to do is we're not going to print with turquoise we're going to eliminate that as an actual screen and as an actual color but i'm going to take that data and I'm going to assign it to other channels. So I still retain the detail, but I'm going to shift that and I'm going to mix colors in different degrees to reproduce that on screen. Now I may make the decision that that's unnecessary data, so again I can delete it. So you really have two decisions. 
And uh, you can see here we have gray. You can see there's far more data on the gray channel, and that might be more significant. Additionally, I'm going for a metallic effect in this design. So you can see this sort of bolt here in this file. You can see that that actually has a metallic or gray effect or texture. So you can see as I manipulate that gray, you can see that has a pretty significant impact on the way this file would look. So what I may choose to do, I don't want to dedicate a screen, and I don't want to print with gray ink. I really want to consolidate this, and I want to print this with five color. That's my goal. So what I can do is I can go to the channels drop down and I can merge the gray channel. So I want to retain that information, but I'm going to shift it unto the top white and I'm going to mix different frequencies of ink to reproduce that. So I'm not going to print with gray, but I'm still going to retain that sort of effect, but I'm going to rely on some of the other screens to, to produce that. So you can see now we have reduced this from nine colors all the way down into a five spot color separated file. So again, we've taken a digital image, you know, uh, whether it be uh, you know, made in Photoshop or whether it be a photograph, and we can now screen print this in five colors to produce this level of quality. All right, let me walk you through one other function that I think is, is very valuable in this workflow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deselect some of these channels here. So what I've done is I've just left the base white. So you can see the base white, this would be the very first you know, screen or color we would imprint. And one of the beautiful things about Separation Studio is it automatically organizes this into the right print order. So I print base white first. The next step, and this is what I call, again, the virtual press walk, I would print base white, then I would print red. And you can see as a result of mixing red and white in different frequencies and saturations, we get this effect. So you're gonna see immediately what this is gonna look like on press without actually having to do a, you know, a test print or a test run. So as I print the gold, the spot color gold, you can see that impact that it has on the design. And as I print green, you can see that effect. Now here is one of the keys to success in terms of quality output in uh, you know, doing simulated process printing. This is the key component of Separation Studio, is the white top. And you can see as soon as I click the white top, which is what we call the magic white. You know, this, is, this is the magic, this is the key to the whole system. So as I click the, the white top, you can see what that does to the design. It brings out dimension. It brings out the shading, the shadows, the highlights, the lighting effect. And a lot, oftentimes screen printers say, is this necessary? Is this a necessary you know, channel? Do I have to print this? And the answer is absolutely, unequivocally, yes, because it brings out all of the dimension in a design. Now, you have a lot of control. Again, I have the ability to go and click on the top white, and I can throttle down the intensity of the white, I can ratchet up that white saturation. So if I find that that top white needs a little bit more impact, or maybe it needs to be throttled down ever so slightly, maybe it's a little too intense, um, I have the ability to make that adjustment on screen. And you can, again, using the view right technology, using the proof positive, I can see exactly what impacts these adjustments are gonna have before I get to press. So again, this is uh, using these tools to speed your workflow, to create perfect separations the first time in the software before you get to press. So you can see that workflow, that's really the, the entire process. Now one thing I want to point out that you know, this is a great tool to generate, you know, uh, take a digital image and prepare it for printing on a dark garment. We have a base white, which is uber critical. You know, we, if you're going to build a house, you have to have a proper foundation. That's the significance of the base white. Now I also have the ability to change the ground color. By default, and in the training for this product, we always recommend that you leave it set to black. Anything that looks good on a black garment is going to look good on a white or a, a different color garment. But I do have the ability to change the ground color. So if I know that I'm going to output this on a white garment, I can switch the ground color to white. And of course, I have the ability to make some adjustments here. So let's go back to our proof positive in a new window. I have the ability to do several key things. I have the ability to generate a channel to, uh, for black. So here you can see in the drop down, generate black, and I have the ability to generate a black channel from the graphic. And I can choose different settings. Oftentimes people want more detail, so they're gonna you know, choose the sharper uh, setting. So what I have the ability to do is now generate a black channel, and I can do that by going immediately from the file. So I can do it from document or from file. We oftentimes recommend that you do it from the original file because there's been no adjustments made to that. So here I'm gonna go from file and I'm gonna choose sharper. So what I'm gonna do is I have to re-import that specific file. So I'm gonna go back and grab the same file and we're gonna generate a black channel from the original graphic. So here you can see we've now generated a perfect separation for printing on a light color garment. And you can see here now we have that 
black sharper channel uh, that we've just generated. So again, this is a, a tool that you can use for printing on a dark garment, light color garments, whatever you know the, the purpose may be. You have the right tools. Additionally, you have the right education and the right support. That's really the key to this, this technology is we provide video training tutorials to master this process. And there are some key considerations. There are some color correction uh, tools and tips that we can share with you. So again, garbage in, garbage out. If you go through a quick color correction uh, process, you're going to get much better quality uh, prints. So this has been a quick introduction to Separation Studio. The conclusion of this, in terms of getting this uh, to press, is I would now go File, and I can go Save As, and we have the ability to save this as an EPS file. And many of you know that an EPS file, encapsulated postscript, is typically a vector you know, file. Well, with that said, you know, EPS can store, you know, postscript information. So what I would do is I would save this to my, you know, computer, and I would have the ability to open this in Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw, and it's going to have these five spot colors embedded in this EPS file. From that point, you know, we would put in our registration marks, we would print off our separations, and go to press. So that's sort of the entire process from start to finish. Now we'll have a secondary video that's going to give you a little bit more detail. We're going to go through uh, more of the functions in the software. So if you really want to see more, make sure to watch the, the second video uh, that you'll find on this very same page to see the workflow and the details. Now if you want to know more, make sure to reach out to us. We'd be glad to give you a live personal presentation. We'd be glad to take one of your files and kind of walk you through the separation process using one of the designs that you have. So this has again been an introduction into Separation Studio. There are a few different you know, simulator process printing products uh, on the market. There are none that are as good as Separation Studio, and that's why Ryanet chooses to, to represent it and to offer it to our clients because it is the best. And if you want to pr produce the best prints and the best separations, well, of course, you have to have the best tool. So again, if you have any questions you want to know more, make sure to reach out to us.